This week on The Battalion, we take an inside look into the nation's busiest engine company, Engine 10, Truck 13, the House of Pain. We follow several firefighters through their 24-hour shift where nothing is routine. All coming up right now on The Battalion. Morning begins with a medical call. Engine 10 responds. I chose to become a firefighter because I like helping people. I actually started my career on the ambulance and then I cross-trained over to be a firefighter. This is one of the best jobs in the world. It has a good schedule. You learn a lot. You learn how to be a team player. There's a lot of honor and respect. You helped a lot of people in different ways. If it's not a medical call, you may give advice. You may be a counselor one day. You may be a um, treat them medically another day. It's a great job. The patient is quickly treated in the home. No transport to the hospital is necessary. And Engine 10 returns back to service and back to the station for breakfast. Well, during my off time, I'm the youth coordinator for my church, CAC Woosom. So I spend a lot of time with the youth and um, with the church. Firefighters in D.C. work a 24-hour shift with three days off. Some have part-time jobs. Most spend the time with their families and friends, and some volunteer at other stations. This breakfast is cut short. Engine 10 gets another local medical call. The physical stress of being on call for 24 hours a day can take a toll on the health of a firefighter. It is difficult to work at Engine 10, also known as the House of Pain, without a healthy diet and exercise routine. What I do to keep in shape because I'm at the House of Pain is I normally go to the gym and I work out and I try to eat healthy. So I work out three days a week, I go to turkey ticket, I may run on the elliptical, lift weights, do push-ups, do sit-ups, and sometimes ride my bike. The patient is packaged up and prepared for transport to the hospital for further evaluation. The patient is delivered and the morning continues with another local medical, this time to a nursing home a few blocks away. Fast response time and knowledge of how to quickly navigate the surrounding area is crucial to saving lives. In D.C., all firefighters consistently study their first due area. Some technicians could drive any route within that area and find a hydrant in their sleep. Later that day, the crew of Truck 13 ride a replacement truck while number 13 is in the shop for a quick repair. They respond to a fire alarm at Gallaudet University, a school for the hearing impaired.
My name is Mike Fulcher. I've been working here for 17 years, and I've been working the same place the whole time, Truck 13. Well, it's kind of a funny story. I was working part-time doing heat and air conditioning in the streets of D.C., and I was coming across a uh, telephone post, and I saw a sign that said vacancy announcement. And here I am. Sounds like it'd be a good job. That's, that's what I did. Applied for the job, and I got it. Hey, you know, never knew anything about firefighting before I came here. Matter of fact, I didn't know the difference between the engine or the truck. My first day on the job was the first time I ever stepped foot on a fire truck, so that's what I did. The false alarm seems to have been a prank. Firemen comb the building to ensure there is no threat. Meanwhile, Mike takes the opportunity to have the young probationary firefighter climb the ladder and then shows him how it's really done. False alarm calls like this one are a normal occurrence. Unfortunately, it costs the department thousands of dollars. Millions are spent each year responding to adolescent pranks. People just aren't seeing us today, are they? Huh? People just aren't seeing us today, are they? I'm the truck driver. I get on the piece and we go. And I, I, I take where we gotta go. How exciting would it be if everybody got out of your way? You know, how good would you get if everybody got out of your way and you didn't have any challenges every day? You know, that's what gives you experience dealing with the people who don't move out of your way. You know, they have a job, they're going through a job. Hey, I got a job to do too. We'll get there, you know? Civilian drivers who don't react or pay attention to sirens add valuable seconds to response times. Those seconds can mean the difference between the first or last on the scene and even life or death. Commuting delays added 30 seconds of this call. Thankfully, this was a non-emergency medical call and not a fire. A police officer's hand was cut in an attack by the man whom was arrested by the DC police and the FBI. Man, I haven't had too many big fires. I had a couple fires, but not enough big for me to say it. it's close call, you know? Nothing big yet. My part-time job is my son. I keep my son all the time. Every day, I'm all fees with me. Graduated from the academy, born a couple days before we graduated. So it's like, he's rolling, I'm rolling, we all rolling. The crew heads to the maintenance yard to pick up their truck 13. They go back in service and return to the station. Engine 10 responds to a medical call. The landlord believes that he heard someone yelling in one of the apartments and called 911. The situation is quickly secured. No one is in need of medical attention. Truck 4, Battalion 1, Battalion 2, Squad 1, Hazmat Unit, May 29, respond. Truck 13 is on scene when Squad 3 arrives. The crew is staged as the RIT team to protect the other firefighters. RIT, hey, Rapid Intervention. That's in case uh, a fireman comes trapped, we're there to help him out, pull him out, that's pretty good. The building has been evacuated. The battalion ventilates the apartment structure by breaking out windows on each floor, and then searching for additional victims or fire. Well, I have a couple family members on the job already. I wasn't growing up wanting to be a firefighter. It's just an opportunity that I got. Took it and ran with it. I mean, I love the job now that I'm doing it. Everything's fine, man. The residents of the building are now believed to be out of harm's way. Someone is still trapped on the third floor. An elderly man is too scared to leave his apartment. Mike and the Engine 10 firefighter enter the apartment building to find the man in the window. It's not scary, man. You know, there's. You never know when things are going to happen. What you can do is just prepare yourself. It's like playing football and baseball. You know, you 
You play like you practice. And the more you the more you do it, the better you get at it. Mike and the firefighter from Engine 10 help the man to safety. As soon as you forget how dangerous it is, that's when you get hurt. So it uh, teaches the experience to, to keep ourselves alive. The building is clear and the fire is extinguished. The battalion members now cover the building and search for any possible victims. It was like a rush. Like as soon as these doors open, it's like a rush. Just take over you and you hop off, run in, come on out. The building is now secure. There is excessive water damage on all floors. Squad 3 now leaves the scene of the incident as the engine companies wrap hose and clean up the area. I try to hang with the young guys, man. I'm almost 40 years old, and what you gotta do is keep moving, stay moving. 